This is the first D-type that I had to develop. Uh-huh. OVC 501 is the first one. Yeah. Now, it's what we call the short nose. Uh -huh. Now, this was potentially a Mulsanne, uh -huh. top speed, about 170. Yeah. So, uh -huh. no fin, we didn't need it. Right. But then, later on, when we went on to the long nose, uh -huh. 50, 55 car, uh, with more performance, more performance, performance yeah, yeah. we had the fin. But right. sound and structurally stiffer than uh, the C type, this is. It's, it's, it's what the dreams design. are made of. Oh, this, yeah, isn't it? yeah. I mean, every car nut and fanatic in the country would just love to get in their hands on it. It's just gorgeous. You know, there's and, just and something about them, you know, versus the modern cars, which are beautiful, you know, oh, they're no, no, great. No, no, but there's something just so romantic and deep and touchable, and, you know, it's just you just want to fall in love with these you things. You remember these days when wow. we did this 60 years ago. This was uh -huh. all hand hand work. Hand made, all yeah. Hand. Uh -huh. Now I mean, with the computers and that, they can set set the uh, yeah. presses up to press yeah. things out. A lot of all this stuff was made by hand. Yeah. On a, what they call a wooden book, they used to have a wooden uh -huh. shape, and then they'd make the panels to fit that wooden frame and then put it all uh -huh. together. So you had a finished car. I want to ask you one question. Right out of blue. I was reading the history and I read in 1955 or something a guy called Ninian Sanderson. Sanderson. It's Ninian Sanderson. Who's he? Ninian Sanderson. Mm -hmm. He won Le Mans 50, uh, 56. Ninian Sanderson and Ron Flockhart. Ron Flockhart, that the was two, the other guy. Two and Sterling and Collins come second. That's right, that's it. Yep. Ninian Sanderson's family were just sending out a message to tell people that we know who you are and your dad was great or your granddad. Yeah, yeah, he, sure. he was a great driver, but I never heard him, and yeah. I hate missing yeah. it and stuff like no, that. No, no. Let's well, have a look at the noisy bit, my well, son. We've got to undo well, this I'll get run that You, that, you take that one, my son. Okay. Oh, there baby. There you go. Wow, look at that flipping thing. Take a close look at this, lads. There is your subframe bolted to the scuffle. Yeah. See? Oh, uh, yeah. And the beauty of it is. You can now have a complete open bonnet. Yeah, and look work. at this. You can, you can sleep on it. Yeah, you can get every part you want without struggling. Beautiful. It's all open, and uh, uh, everything you can uh, you need to adjust or set, you can do it with the bonnet open. That's it. Yeah. Well, it was it was early race car things where you know you had to get just that's get out right. of the way and do everything you needed to do. Everything. This is absolutely gorgeous, Norman. Two years. Brian, two uh, years later, Formula One adopted this same principle this of, of uh, building the car. Yeah. So, how long did you race these for, Norman? You know, because I know you were development chief as well, cause, and sometimes getting a race was probably yeah, a little yeah, bonus yeah. because they needed you back at the yeah. factory to do this stuff. The first race, uh, first D-type race was 54. <coughs> 54. Uh, that went 54, 55, uh, 56. Aye. Then there was a lull, and then it went on the Ecos carried on with the D-types, uh -huh. uh, they did 57, 57 seven yeah. onwards. Yeah. Right. In, in total, the Jaguar cars, uh, and apart from the company and uh, the Ecos, uh, seven wins. Seven uh, wins. Uh, that's unbelievable. Beautiful record. I mean, it, yeah. was, a, it was a purple patch of Jaguar, oh, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, and, right. you know, and you and these other guys uh, did it all yourselves. That's right. Here, round here. Yeah, you know, that's up, right. Up in the Midlands, near Birmingham. The one test track at Myra, uh, is the triangle one uh -huh. 2.8 for a lap? Uh, it's uh, banked at each corner of the triangle. Uh -huh. I did one and a quarter million miles on that circuit. At one and a quarter million? At over 100 miles an hour. It is some astronauts haven't done that much. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. I was talking American there. I just thought I'd mention just to yeah. show you how many miles we were clocking up on uh, these to develop it and get it reliable, you know. That was the old way, wasn't it? Weren't any computers in? Oh, no, no. Norman, no. take your sandwiches. Uh, That's right. But quick break for lunch. It's nine o'clock. Uh, get yourself back here at half past four. Uh -huh. and, and don't stop the car. We'd be on the circuit at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. Just drive dark at night. To develop you, you've got mm -hmm. the riding and handling. You've got the cooling system. You've got a gearbox testing, the accident. Uh, the whole thing breaks. Before you, know, you can sign it off. I've got to say something for Norman's defence here, which is, he's been way too modest. I drove this C tape over here in the Mila Milia uh, in four days. <clears throat> uh, but one day we were driving, it must have been 11 hours in the day driving, and it was so hot in that car, because you see, there's no carpets or anything like that. 
my shoes, the heels of my <laughs> shoes had melted to the floor. And I'm not kidding. I, I came to, to move over to the brake and I went, oh my God, yeah. my feet up. And, and I had to take my, my shoe, my foot out oh, of my shoe, shoe and yeah. put it on the brake quickly. So, you know, what, what he did in these cars, he's not telling the, the, the real full story of just the heat that's generated in here. As I said, it's all aluminium that's right. all around you, and aluminium loves heat. Yep. It just generates that stuff all over the place. So, I mean, I don't know how you did it uh, for well, that long. We just got on with it. Well, he, it was, he, was, he, was, he was six foot two when he started, you know. <laughs> That'll do it, you win it. <laughs> Shrink you by the inch. That'll do it. Wow, this is yeah, wonderful, yeah. Mason. Thank you, Norman, for that little brief history through these cars because they really are part of the British heritage. The thing is, Brian, taking it overall, I mean, when you consider we built the cars, tested, developed them, got them ready for Le Mans, all yes. the races, we used to drive them there and drive them, win the race and drive them back. That's How right. do they do it? They don't do it today. You know, I, I keep forgetting about that. Yeah. You, you didn't fly but, there and, no, no, we and have somebody pick you up. You had to drive them there yourself, didn't you? We used to drive through London, uh -huh. drive them through London, uh -huh. down to Dover, get the boat, go over there, win the race and drive them back, you know. <laughs> I love that. But that's that's it, on the way back after we'd won, I mean, coming through London, all the guys were blowing the rolls, good yeah. old Jaguar, you know. So you stopped for the night? No, no, straight through. Couldn't afford yeah. to stop. No Are money. You? Oh, <laughs> isn't that sad? You know, going through London, you've just won Le Mans or something, and you kind of go because you've got no money for a sandwich and a cup of tea.